So next we need to install some uh, additional support files for Google SketchUp since uh, keypad for Google SketchUp requires it. And you know that because on the download page of the application, say we go under Mac, since we are on a Mac now, there's the keypad uh, for Google SketchUp icon in the plugin section. So you would click on it and you get a folder downloaded. So let me uh, double click on this folder and let's see what's inside. So there's uh, two files, a plugin file and the shortcuts file and the readme file, which you would want to read presumably. And uh, the readme file tells you what to do. It tells you to put the shortcuts file in, in a certain location. And again, on a Windows machine, it's similar, but you know a different path would be given. And uh, the plugin file is put somewhere else. So let's just do that. So here's the stuff that we downloaded. So apparently I need to go to, I guess I can close this window now. I need to go to library application support, etc. So let's go to, let me open a new finder window and then go to, uh, app, I guess, home. So I have an account here called keypad. And uh, I guess next is library application support, Google SketchUp 7. You know, here it says Google SketchUp because the version number may be different. I do recommend that you download the latest version of uh, Google SketchUp since it's already free. And, uh, and uh, the keypad app is really tested uh, most on the latest version. And inside the SketchUp folder, we need to put the shortcuts file and you will see that there's already a shortcut file there. That's your, your own personal shortcut file. If you have already defined shortcuts for your own personal use, uh, then you probably don't want to overwrite this. So I would say, why don't you just rename it shortcuts old in case you decide to revert back to it. And this is the shortcuts file we downloaded. So I can just drag it in here and done. And then the other one is the plugin file keypad.rb and I can just move this into, it says the help file into the plugins folder. That's it. So make sure Google SketchUp is uh, not running when you do this. So now that I've installed it, I run Google SketchUp and check whether the installation went through properly. So the first thing you want to make sure you see is in the menu here next to window, you should see a plugins menu. And these are all the plugins that were installed. And you can quickly check that the shortcut file is called correctly by going to preferences, go to the shortcuts tab. And in here, just scroll down and just make sure that there's all these strange shortcuts appearing. This is what the the file did because what the iPhone or iPod touch will be doing is sending these keystrokes to control Google SketchUp. So that's it. So now we're ready to go. Then keypad server, as you can see, is running here and I can just hide it now since I don't need to worry about it. And let's run KP SketchUp and uh, connect to the server. And we're set, we can start working. And the layout includes three tabs. Again, I'm going to give you here a very quick overview, but the app has a lot into it, so uh, I can't do justice to it in a short tutorial. So you just have to explore it as you work and see how you uh, make it fit into your own workflow. So this red button gives you access to the three tabs, draw, present, and numeric path. And uh, another useful thing is that uh, the first two tabs, which are most uh, uh, useful when you're actually in a workflow, can be toggled by just tapping once on this. So you can quickly go between the two tabs. And if you're on the numeric tab, you can immediately jump to the first tab by tapping once. So those are ways to access the different controls. And you see different kinds of controls here appearing with different outlines. These are regular buttons. These are menu buttons. If you hold them, you'll see a menu will open up. There's panners. When you hold, you open up uh, something you can slide over. And then as you if you notice something already happened in Google SketchUp when I did that, and here's a slider button. So let's just try to do something with this. I will do select 
select this poor guy and why don't I delete him using the erase tool menu and then slide delete now let me zoom out a bit I guess that didn't go through let's try again my mouse was not inside the window so let me pan up again these pan controls are speed based they will pan in direction where your finger is but the speed is determined by how far away you are from the center so they're easy to control so let me draw the rectangle by tapping on the rectangle tool how about the push pull and uh, I happen to know that double tapping the push pull which this is from the documentation will uh, toggle the add mode for push pull so let me try that double tap you see plus appears so now it adds a section let me just do regular push pull here and here's something cool let's say I want to orbit so I will hold my finger on the orbit button and then as I move it away the, by a speed determined where my finger is I would be orbiting now what you also notice quite uh, nice about this is that uh, let me pan to this side by the way you're orbiting around the object you're looking at that's how this uh, uh, viewing functions work so you orbit typically at something near the center now the nice thing about this is that if you notice as I'm orbiting and panning the push pull tool is still there which is unusual for Google SketchUp because you need to switch to the orbit tool when you do that well that's what the plugins are doing for you they allow you to actually continue within the same tool while you're actually orbiting and panning okay so so for example if I want to push pull on the other side I would just rotate like this and the push pull tool is still active so I would extend it so if I want to orbit and pan with the mouse I just tap on these ones and then now I have control with the mouse here's the panner uh, I can also jump to views here you know these are obvious things so I'll let you explore it yourself so let's orbit down a bit and uh, these controls and this is explained in the documentation which open overlays can also be double tapped and the overlay will stay open so this way I can pan by just tapping and uh, these circular buttons also have menus to them which you can double tap to keep open you can app several you can do that for several menus for quick access or you could just do a hold and then a swipe as long as you keep your finger pressed you can choose options for example I can do an undo and then I can do a redo undo redo etc so so how about let's say I choose the select tool uh, I want to select everything so I'll go menu select all and now I want to group if I tap once that's a group so let's orbit this a bit to the side so I just grouped and how about if I want to ungroup I'll just hold and go to the ungroup that's it so virtually most functions if not yeah there's a few functions left over I would say but most functions are really accessible through these two panes of controls so you can have a full workflow with this there are all kinds of additional uh, features that you can uh, uh, deal with for example uh, if I want to move I just tap uh, let me select everything so that I don't screw up the model so let me try a move and if I want to move a copy then I have to just double tap and that's it and uh, here's another thing if I want to do a selection let's go to the select and let's say I select a face then I can hold the select and when I, the menu opens you notice that these are modifiers now so I can go to add now I can uh, add a selection and it seems it's giving me problem this I've noticed actually it's good that this happened during the tutorial because it seems uh, it happens when you first launch SketchUp after an installation I noticed that once before it's very difficult to replicate so I'm going to quit SketchUp and I'm going to just run it again and uh, see if this was the issue that we need to fix okay so let's see rectangle 
so let's have a push pull select tool and then now i want to have the add modifier uh, again it's giving me that uh, problem i need to diagnose this issue why this modifier is sometimes not working uh, okay well if it's an issue that can be diagnosed i'll post uh, uh, an update on the app website to see a workaround but uh, the problem is that it sometimes happens it sometimes does not and i do not really know at this point why so so what else let's look at other controls here there's the walk control to walk in walk out uh, etc there's some scene control uh, things viewing controls for example turning on guides uh, how about the more interesting ones like shadow fog edges and these are all togglers so you can toggle them on and off and of course the numerical keypad is for actually uh, entering values when you are uh, when you are drawing so let's say let me zoom out a bit and by the way that growl you heard in the background is actually doppler the poem just in case you're wondering okay so uh, let me just draw a rectangle and now i'll specify some dimensions so you see now i can type in dimensions so let me go to the numerical pad and type in uh, maybe five uh, meters so here you can access the meters and then a comma and then how about a 10 meter and then enter that's it so you can enter dimensions too and there's a bonus in the keypad for google sketchup app uh, i've added the control for mouse and uh, uh, keyboard so if you tap on this icon on the top left let me close this this one tap it once then you actually turn the iphone ipod touch into a trackpad and you can actually draw things with this even though i don't really recommend it uh, because it's not very precise sometimes you know when you're doing presentations it could be very handy uh, and uh, if you double tap and this again I'm working sideways on this setup so it's a bit hard to actually deal with but double tapping here will open the keyboard and actually I could use for uh, I could use this for typing using the iPhone or iPod touch to type over Wi-Fi and I don't know this could be handy let's say if I have the uh, the uh, 3d text tool say then you probably want to type some text here so this is an example of again this is not supposed to be something that will revolutionize your workflow it's just an additional bonus that you could use or not use and uh, these buttons as well uh, I forgot to say I shouldn't have quit that sorry uh, these buttons also can also be held and uh, for a third function which uh, is available uh, in certain cases you need to look in the documentation for that I'm still bothered so much by this uh, uh, selecting that I want to try it one more time live it seems like it almost registers it I wonder whether this is more of a bug by google sketchup instead because i can't seem to reproduce it always anyway so i'll address that on the website so keep looking at the blog and uh, uh, and uh, updates will be coming uh, keep suggestions coming as well because based on that i will update the app i wrote this app myself for personal use i actually use this application myself so so uh, it's sort of if it gets better it's good for me as well okay so that's it that's the short tutorial